Shots fired. I can see we got shots fired. More shots fired. Hey, we're looking for Barbara Earl. Uh-huh. Are you Barbara? Well, that just depends. I'm sorry. You all right, ma'am? Yeah, I'm just trying to find my family. You guys find everybody all right? Yeah, we went to check on some elderly neighbors. They're fine. Oh, no. News 25 hitting the road with police this morning. Today's to-do list, round up 19 people wanted for buying too much pseudoephedrine, a cold medicine that's also an ingredient in meth. The dark hours bring no arrests. Going well for three. But with the rising sun comes success. A team of officers and Davis County deputies find this man, Joshua Dawson. He's accused of buying nearly 10 grams of pseudoephedrine, more than 60 pills, within the 30-day period. The limit is 9 grams. There is a, a big difference between those that are legally and legitimately using this as a uh, medicine and those that are trying to uh, buy it and purchase it for the uh, sales of uh, methamphetamine. With the doors closed on Dawson, police keep it in the family. Dawson's brother Joseph also wanted on unlawful possession charges for buying more than 11 grams. We rolled up on this mobile home and watched police make the arrest. As Joseph walks by in handcuffs, his friends stare in shock as he's loaded into the same paddy wagon as his brother, another suspect off the streets. Can you get more information when you make these arrests? Exactly. Uh, a lot of times that will happen. Uh, we'll get uh, more information and it become an ongoing process, uh, investigation as far as getting more information and making more arrests. We finish our ride with one more arrest. Police say when they busted in on Christopher Heimer, he knew exactly why they were there, even knowing just how far over the limit he went. 0.6 grams of ephedrine. You never know what you're going to find when you serve warrants. Knock on somebody's door, you just don't know what's, what's behind that door. For everyone not arrested today, those cases will remain open, and officers say those suspects can expect a knock at the door any time of day. In Owensboro, Alan Cavana, News 25. The retired psychologist and United Methodist minister started his journey at Virginia Beach and he'll finish in San Francisco this summer. News 25 photographer Aaron Hancock caught up with Dr. Sanders in Evansville today. I'm walking to uh, raise a quarter of a million dollars for a prevention program, drug prevention program for teenagers. The walk is just something I always wanted to do. I see it as a way of really getting to experience America firsthand. I started in the in, uh, first landing state park in Virginia Beach and I'll end up in San Francisco around the 1st of July. We expect it to take a little over 120, maybe 25 days. I try to do about 28 to 32 miles a day. It's pretty easy to jog about five miles a day and walk the rest. I've lost a couple of toenails and uh, had some blood blisters. Uh, all of that's really healing. I sprained my ankle the third day out on a rainy day, but I've been blessed to be able to keep walking, keep going with those problems. We have seven pairs that we've broken in fairly well, and within the next couple of weeks, I'll probably start a couple of more pair. I imagine Estimate 15 to 20 pairs by the time I finish. We have to keep washing clothes about every third day, though, just so I have plenty of socks and clothes. <laughs> I love the, the smaller cities and smaller towns, and uh, this Evansville is kind of the typical large city that I'm walking through across America. Occasionally somebody comes along and just gets out and, and walks with me. And one of the great things is when I can walk along and suddenly walk up to somebody and they really want to take time and talk to you, and that's kind of a neat experience. I just want young people to be able to have as many dreams at their age that I have at 67. Hmm. Well, Dr. Sanders' wife is helping him with his journey. She drives ahead about 30 miles each day to set up meals and hotel rooms. 
How you doing? Jeff Payton knows most people on his mail route. And on a hot day like this, he says he's on the lookout for anything unusual, especially among his older customers. You just say hi to them, see if they're okay. A lot of, a lot of them come out and talk to me every day. And that, that way I know they're okay. And if not, if, if their mail is not picked up for a day or two, then you'll know to knock on the door or something just to make sure they're okay. And Peyton says many customers on his route don't have air conditioning. You see them with the box fans and uh, you just wonder how they keep cool in this kind of heat. But they always say they're all right. The heat and humidity is also taking its toll on these construction workers in Newburgh. But these guys say at least their project is scheduled to be done next week. Workers say getting enough water is the key to surviving a day like this. We already went through two jugs today and we go get Gatorade now. So it's pretty hard. It makes you tired and you can't last as long out working. You got to take more breaks. We just want to get this job done. And while the world can't stop when the summer heats up, doctors say know your limits. I guess a message out there to the foremen of the world would be to go easy on the guys with this temperature. Make sure that there's access to fluids and that you're drinking regularly. You know, push yourself to, to keep hydrated.